The World Health Organization has identified antibiotic resistance as the number one public health threat of the future. We would not have cancer chemotherapy, complex surgical management, intensive care unit, tra organ transplants, care for premature babies, if we didn't have effective antibiotics. It can get to the point that we have what we've heard of as superbugs. 23,000 Americans die every year from infections that are resistant to every drug we have. When you've seen a loved one or a friend suffer or die from one of these infections because we're running out of antibiotics to treat them with, it brings it home. It makes you angry. It makes you wonder, how did we get to this point? The more we use antibiotics, unfortunately, the less effective they become. Antibiotic resistance occurs when antibiotics as medications are overused. Antibiotic resistance is driven by a variety of factors. So we have overuse of antibiotics in the clinical setting. When doctors treat patients, they don't necessarily know does their patient have a bacterial infection or another type of disease that is not gonna to respond to an antibiotic. And so the tendency is to say, well, just in case, because I can't say it's not for sure, let me give you this prescription of an antibiotic. How much harm can this one prescription do? And if that happened rarely, we would be okay since it happens tens of millions of times per year in the United States, and we're just talking about antibiotic use in humans, it drives resistance. That doesn't even begin to cover the inappropriate use in animals, which greatly outweighs the amount of, of antibiotics we put into people. About 70% of the antibiotics sold in the United States are put into animals, not people. They're used um, for ways to um, to make animals larger or to make up for uh, bad, poor conditions of the animals. Animals receive antibiotics on a daily basis. That means that their bacteria is exposed to antibiotics on a regular basis. You could think about it as if a father takes his daughter to see her physician before she starts kindergarten. And the father says, my daughter's starting kindergarten this year. I'd like to receive uh, antibiotics for her to take every day for the next year. That is a gross misuse of antibiotics. In humans, we would consider this abuse of antibiotic use. But in agriculture, unfortunately, there was a point when it became an industry standard. Much of it comes from sort of an, an old paradigm where it was believed that it could help increase revenues. It could prevent disease before it happens. But what we've learned is that the routine use of antibiotics in agriculture has some disastrous implications for public health in humans. We could reduce the use, these 70% of antibiotics, down to uh, just therapeutic uses. If an animal is actually sick, we should go in, a veterinarian should prescribe antibiotics and help that animal get well. But we don't need to do this pre-dosing. The kindergartner doesn't need to take antibiotics every single morning in her Cheerios. We have created this massive public health problem that affects children, it affects people that are vulnerable, people that are immunosuppressed, older patients. These populations are disproportionately affected. Why are we allowing that to occur? Here at the University of Wisconsin Hospitals, in the past year we've taken the lead in trying to reduce antibiotic use uh, and exposure in our patients, families, and employees. The kitchen here only serves now uh, antibiotic-free meats. Consumers can play a big role here, and they can make decisions with their pocketbook. And that will help businesses understand our customers are asking for a move into this market segment, the antibiotic-free meat segment. That's what they're asking for. We should give them that. That's in our best business interest. The alignment of market forces with public good is something you don't see very often, but we have it here. When you think about McDonald's in particular and the fact that um, um, uh, I think that they serve oh, millions of maybe upwards of one billion yeah. pounds uh, of beef every year, and you think about all the antibiotics that have gone to produce that and what the downstream consequences are, I think that they hold so much power in this issue. The leadership needs to come from companies like that. So this is a real key time. I think policymakers, the food industry, needs to respond to this public health threat because this is not a small uh, outbreak. 